you I'm going to show you how to fuzz your Rust code. So if you're unfamiliar with fuzzing, I would recommend you uh, take a look at one of my uh, past videos uh, in which I explain how to fuzz your Solidity smart contract uh, because the principles are the same. Um, so in a nutshell, fuzzing allow you to stress, you know, your code, your function, you know, whatever you have in order to catch unpredicted behavior. So how we do that, we usually introduce numerous random, you know, and uh, sometimes incorrect, you know, uh, data uh, or input to our to a function or to our target code uh, because we want to see how our program actually react to that. How is our error handling? How our libraries or dependencies actually react to that? So it's very useful because usually you can uh, find the stuff that uh, or bugs or vulnerabilities, things that usually you can't normally find them via static analysis or normal code audit. This the tricky stuff essentially. Um, however, if you want to fuzz efficiently, it requires also a lot of work and uh, uh, there are a lot of technologies involved. So I publish a couple of papers in terms of fuzzing. I'm a cybersecurity researcher and uh, actually a smart contract or blockchain developer. Um, uh, there are a whole bunch of ways, so uh, you can take a look at my website or YouTube channel to find different ways of you know, code coverage, uh, symbolic testing, uh, concurrent execution, and so forth. But in this video, I'm just gonna wrap it up mostly for uh, developers to show them how they can take it, you know, basically fast the Rust code, okay? So I try to make it uh, very simple and quick and uh, maybe in the future I make more sophisticated videos about that. So um, what we are going to do, there are actually a number of, uh, you know, uh, fuzzers for Rust, but uh, the most recommended one uh, is called Cargo Fuzz. And Cargo Fuzz is a subcommand of Cargo um, that uh, take advantage of lib fuzzer. So lib fuzzer is a fuzzer that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, has been introduced for C, C++, and then later on for uh, for Rust. And uh, it works actually through an uh, external create uh, lib fuzzer sys. So firstly, we need to install um, cargo fuzz uh, in our environment, and then uh, we need to basically write some target. Um, and uh, after that, we can easily execute our basically target and see the result of fuzzing. So it may depends on how you write your target. It may take a while, and uh, it basically try to introduce various you know randomized inputs to see how program actually behave. Uh, does it lead to any? Uh, panic or memory violation in terms of you know in case if you have like unsafe code so yeah let's let's get it started and do that I've loaded a benchmark code you know for our fuzzing so we have a code over here and I opened that in VSC so you can use your own environment you just need to open terminal and you just need to make sure that Rust and Cargo are already installed. So presumably you have everything in place. Otherwise, you wouldn't move to you know Rust fuzzing, right? <laughs> so the first thing you need to do, we need to install basically Cargo fuzz. So you need to make sure that you have Cargo and then install, and it's quite easy. Cargo fuzz like that. So I've already installed that, but you know you can see that uh, here. Sorry, Cargo fuzz. Yeah. Yeah, I do have it, 0 0.11, 0.0. So that's it. And uh, you can also upgrade your, um, um, you know, cargo files. So you can install, uh, enter this command, um, cargo install, force cargo and fuzz.
All right, so we are done with the installation and now I'm gonna go to URL and I'm gonna actually fuzz uh, some functions here. So the first command is cargo uh, fuzz init. So by running this command, it actually makes like a, a target folder or fuzz folder for us and some target template, or empty template. So if you run like this, then you just list here, you can see fuzz folder, okay? If I go to fuzz folder, I do see, you know, targets and so forth. So in order to make sure that what do we have here or we don't have, we can use like cargo fuzz list and it shows us the list of targets. So we do need these targets to specify the target, which part of the code we are going to fuzz, okay? So we have like a template, you know, um, target over here. So let's actually take advantage of this template and a little bit enrich that. So um, if I just open this here, you can, um, you know, walk through this. Um, we go here. Okay, so this is our template basically. And uh, so here I'm gonna go and uh, a little bit, you know, uh, add some stuff. Uh, I can just, you know, run these templates without doing anything, you know, and uh, but this is not efficient at all and it doesn't do very much for us. So then I need to use like cargo files and run the, na the name of, uh, you know, our, um, uh, our basically uh, target uh, file, which is target, uh, was target uh, one. And you see, it may take some time, you know, um, to prepare that, and grab dependencies and so forth. So um, here actually it's a, uh, you need to put your stuff basically inside the fuzz target um, because uh, lib fuzzer, because this is our backend fuzzer in this for cargo fuzz, uh, is going to actually uh, call the body of of here, you know, call the body of fast target uh, with basically uh, like sort of random bytes until you know our program uh, hits some sort of bug or crash uh, or any panic or uh, segmentation fault or anything like that. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna go and uh, fuzz a, uh, a specific function here. I'm gonna use basically URL and I'm gonna fuzz one uh, specific function uh, within this module. Uh, so I call stern create and the name of that is URL. Okay. All right, so within my code, I'm gonna basically fuzz this specific function here to see how it parses basically the input. So here it takes like a string slice and uh, it returns URL or generate error, okay? So I'm gonna go here and now I try to specify, you know, the context information for my fuzzing. And I said, okay, um, eight. And here I got the data, the random, you know, so the random uh, generated data here, which which is going to be generated by libfuzzer. And I pass this one here, and then I said, all right, so I'm gonna get the parse. And X over here, and this again. Okay, so it takes a while by the way, but if it basically leave this like that, eventually it should crash somewhere, okay? Because this, this function is buggy. And, uh, but it takes a while, so you need to basically wait. And uh, presumably you can also, you know, uh, run your code on a machine, on a server, or VPS, or something like that. Uh, especially if your code is huge. So here you can also find the, the generated basically uh, corpuses for, for our fuzzing. So uh, we are finding some stuff, um, but we need to be patient.
So it takes actually a lot of time sometimes. It, sometimes it could be quite short because we generate like pseudo random inputs. So yeah, that's it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you like this type, kind of content and you find this informative, please don't forget to follow me, subscribe, write down your comments, check out my GitHub and so on. Yeah, thank you very much and see you soon.